start to introduce ourselves. So this is a webinar uh, that we called How to Bring Artistry into Your Everyday Life. So why artistry? Um, art is, we feel it's present everywhere. Creativity is present everywhere. Um, in our school, this is something that we uh, introduce into our everyday lives. So we're going to talk about, this is a very interactive web webinar. So we all together, and we are waiting for your questions all along, your comments. And um, what do we mean by artistry? What is part of art? And why would we separate art from the rest of what we teach it at Imbra Montessori Art School? We think it's highly important, art. We think uh, that um, it is highly important, but why is it highly important? So we have a wonderful crew tonight. Uh, with artists and teachers from the Edinburgh Montessori Art School. Um, we have, uh, I'm just going to let you introduce yourself, but first, I'm just going to invite you to um, see uh, our latest video that we created with Marta, our um, infant community teacher, uh, about art and what she creates in her teaching, um, that is, okay, I'm just gonna share it and let you, get you inspired by this. So give me just a second. Here it is. I think art is all around us um, and just, I think it's part of us and it's just about preparing the environment around us to make that bloom in us, to create that appreciation for it. Because there are so many ways of us to self-express ourselves as human beings and you have, you can use painting, you can use music and, and your voice and even cooking is can be turned into an art form so it's all around us. I do spend a lot of time doing art with the children. We do have quite a lot of projects going on and art permeates everything, different different types of art. Um, I mean, at some point, this class will look, sounds like a musical because we have songs for everything. So all the transitions, rolling up a rug, putting your shoes in the cloakroom, um, there's a lot of music, there's a lot of singing, even just washing your hands. Stand up, and it's very easy to make up a melody just by what you want them to do next. I see you. If there is ideas that are valuable and inspiring and related to art, I, I enjoy sharing them. And that was the case with the Shadow Theatre piece that I started off by doing to the infant community. And I realized, oh, this would be great for the children's house. Even the elementary children enjoyed uh, being part of that. And your mind is different according to where you are in your development through life. So the same thing is, is okay to use in different ages because you'll get a different impact from it. It'll make you think in different ways. I actually used to be a part of a group, a shadow theater group, when I was younger in my, my first degree in university. The idea for using recycling materials is because that's what we try to do starting in infants. And that's something that I tell the parents even, to create activities for your children. And the market now for children's toys is so vast, you don't need all of that. You can create, and that's another art form, another gift you give to your children if they see you use things around you. My dad, he was a musician. My mom, she was a painter. So I guess <laughs> I must have gotten that somehow and how fun that was to learn through that and how somewhat magical as well, because it is all around us. I see it every day. 
it's hard to put it into words, but I do see how the children react to that. Even just the um, marking over there in the easel, and you and you could see the child dabbing in it and making beautiful markings, but also the rhythm. So there's musicality, not just the the splash and the visual effect. There's also sound to it. So it's just everything combined. <laughs> to have a chance to actually work with children and from the get-go fill them in with that appreciation to see beauty all around them and to create beauty to know that they're capable of transforming the world with the things that they have around them that's an amazing gift that you give to somebody so it is pretty big <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, um, what stays in my mind, beauty, art, all around that. So, Marta, maybe I just can, I, I, I can pass you the ball and, and invite you just to introduce yourself and what is your role in the school? What do you do? Um, hi, my name is Marta and I'm an infant community teacher. And um, yeah, I have fun with the kids every day. <laughs> That's all I do. I come to work and I have fun. <laughs> we have a special um, uh, mm -hmm. guest here, right? On your lap. Yes. <laughs> yeah, hi, Ben. <laughs> he was in the classroom Hi, last year actually and um and because of having him being my first child um a lot of the activities that i actually bring to the classroom i get inspired by him by researching what i want to do with him and then i see him in all the other ones so i want to share that and bring that to, to everybody else yeah <laughs> Thank you. Um, maybe I can just pass the ball around and let you let you introduce yourself. Um, maybe Lindsay, uh, you are you also created a beautiful video. We don't have time to to watch it, but it's uh, on YouTube and um, on Facebook and everywhere, basically. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, my name is Lindsay. I am the, the music teacher or music specialist at EMAS and I think I have been uh, teaching in the school for seven, possibly eight years now. So so quite a long time. Um, it's a great school to teach for and yeah, loads of experiences that I'm sure I will share with you as the hour goes on. So we also have our newest member of um, Edinburgh Montessori Art School's team, Emma. Hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi. I had no idea, Lindsay, you'd been there for seven years. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Yeah, going strong. <laughs> going strong, yeah. Um, so I joined Ema last almost a year ago and um, so I work as I'm an artist in residence I work in the art studio alongside elementary um, and kind of work on various different projects with um, with elementary and also a bit with teens as well um, but usually it's very kind of led by them and things change all the time <laughs> so yeah it's a lot of fun so I'm curious here, when you say artist in the resident, what, what does that mean? So I studied textiles, so I'm originally, I still make my own work as well. Um, so yeah, specialized in knit design and textiles. Um, that kind of, I'm really influenced by the kids, I think, as much as they maybe are inspired by me um so i think it kind of works both ways which is really nice mm. so you're kind of joining marta when she said um um 
you basically say, I'm, I'm learning every day from my child. I'm testing. I test every everything I do. I test and let him uh, inspire <sighs> me. Yeah, that's the, that. Thank you so much. And so, Rachel, you were here in the last time. You didn't, you didn't have so much time to talk. So you're, who are you? <laughs> so I am an art therapist. So I've been working at Montessori for four or five years as an art therapist. And I think following on just from what's been said and being led and being inspired by the child, I, I feel that being an art therapist uh, in a Montessori school uh, allows that to happen um, in a really rich way because the children learn from such a young age that um, it's really important to learn how they want to do things and to be guided and facilitated um, by amazing teachers like Marta. Um, I just think that instills the confidence that when they then come to me, they've already they already know that actually they can choose things and make choices and and be supported with that but take that lead um which really inspires me as well so. so i know about therapy i know about art how you combine those two together what is that art therapy so i would say art therapy is a form of therapy where art is uh, used um, as a key component um, for communication within the, within the work. So, um, so I'm learning all the time by how the children in the, in the work are communicating through the artwork. And I think it's also a tool within the sessions as well. Um, so in a typical art therapy space, we might have art materials, but also play materials as well, like sand. And so I think just, again, trying to um, have a variety of materials that show children that actually it's not just maybe a paint and a paintbrush you can use to be creative, but what would it mean to have um, some acorns or some leaves or... Um, you know, sometimes we have sort of cooking based materials so things can be made and potions can be made. So I think trying to expand their view of art and creativity as well within the sessions and what we provide for them. It feels like when I when I when I listen to you, it feels like that they basically discover that um any object, any material, anything can can go beyond the basic um, use that we 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 create. So I could I could see in your video, Marta, um, you were using basically a cardboard from and. You muted. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, that idea of using materials and that their basic function, it's you go beyond that. Um, I use that a lot. And with the really young children, when you model something, that's how you sometimes teach is by modeling. And if they catch how how you create, for instance, I, I love to tell stories during circle time, storytelling, and not just picking up a book and reading it, but um, setting the stage. I, there was one time I brought a, a small little a table and then I created a, a forest scene with some natural elements, maybe with some toilet rolls, pebbles, uh, leaves, and then there were miniatures and they were the ones telling the story. And then you give that to them and they will retell it using the same things. They can even change the story. And maybe in our therapy, a lot of people use that as a way to express certain emotions that, especially for children that cannot speak very, very well, or they're, they're still learning language, but the emotions are all there. 
yeah they and have I think them there, so that's you know that's a really <laughs> good way without judgment that they can just express themselves and let things come out yeah mm, definitely and I think narrative is something that we're always working <laughs> with as well um within art therapy maybe it's kind of supporting the child at that moment in their life to understand some of their narrative within themselves um but as you said Marta it's also kind of narrative through how materials are used and and how they're communicating and sharing stories with me through play or through sand or um through the way they're using their body in the room that day um you know so I think communication is um is not just it's such a small percent of it that's actually using words isn't it and I know that um yeah, this is similar, isn't it, Lindsay, with music as well? Just a great so tagging similar. for you there. Just... Thank you. <laughs> jump in with as well. But yeah, communication is, is such this important thing in artistry because music especially, you can communicate with pretty much anything and turn it into a rhythmical, a melodic little idea that can sort of pass from one child to another and then before you know it you're communicating like in a completely different way and expressing yourself and enjoying yourself which is so important um but yeah it's, it's brilliant um see it pretty much every every single time I'm in EMAS um I just realized that I uh let you introduce yourself and I forgot to introduce myself so my name is Christina Wickhardt and I'm a well-being coach at EMAS. Um, I basically um, uh, help and support uh, staff at EMAS to um, enjoy themselves and be happy and and find the right solutions, uh, creative solutions. So, um, and I want to introduce somebody else who is not here because he's always behind the screen. And he was the one creating um, our video that we just uh, uh, presented to you about um, infant community, Marta and, um, and creativity. Um, thank you so much. A special thanks to you, Rob, Rob Eaton-Jones. Uh, who is a professional photographer and filmmaker and many other things. So thank you so much. And I'm just going to bounce the ball back um, because I, I think it's important to, to talk about this uh, filmmaking and you were, you were also talking about this communication and how important is to to be able to show Marta you just said a couple of words at the end it's difficult to put words on something like this creativity and art well you're gonna try to not right but uh, <laughs> but uh, basically um, and I will quote Emma our Emma Rattigan who is our um, um, the founder and um, principal of Edinburgh Montessori Art School. Um, you told me earlier, well, what I think about art is um, it feels like it's, it's um, how do you say that, a thousand different languages. It's like embedded in, in our human beings. I'm hoping I'm quoting it well, but you're welcome just to comment <laughs> if you're here, uh, Emma, with us tonight. Um, but it's basically when you talk about communication, when you talk about um, how to help a child uh, who maybe doesn't have the right language, well, art is one way or a thousand different ways, right? Um, so... I may have a question to you, Emma. Um, being artist in residence, you, if I understand well, you were you teacher or artist before? I was an artist before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> what is? Why is it? Why are you here, basically? 
what is an artist can take away from these kind of experience being an artist in residence? Um, I think for in inspiration for the children and also rather than I think when I was in school um, I think sharing passion maybe because I think in school art was quite maybe constricted and you were either told you were good or bad at art which I think a lot of people still feel as adults um, and I think if that's like cultivated from a really a young age and is continued and the children feel safe and comfortable to express in whatever way they want to um so yeah I don't know if that answers your question actually um but I think being in the emas rather than um I think it's just super inspiring and um I think them seeing my work and working alongside me is really nice um and I think we all kind of inspire each other and they inspire each other so much um as well like I could have a suggestion for the project for a project and then it just kind of evolves into something else so naturally which is yeah which is really nice really special yeah <laughs> I was thinking off the back of that Emma I was with um some children today um in the art room and I think the ability for children to walk into a room with confidence and decide what they're going to make, what materials they need for that, and to, mm. to create something is such a gift to have at a young age. Yeah. And I think um, can be kind of a skill that can be brought into so many different then areas of, of life as, as they go on, whether it's having a load of um, ingredients in front of them and turning it into something or having a problem to solve and turning it into a solution. Um, so I had a child today with some polystyrene and some cardboard and she made a cardboard um, polystyrene cat-shaped kite. <laughs> and I would have never come up with that. Um, but her confidence <laughs> to get on with it and to problem solve and to, to end up with um, something that she had in her imagination to sort of bring that to life um, sort of rem reminded me of that moment, Emma, as you spoke there. Yeah. Yeah, I, that is, it is it, like bringing what's in your head and your imagination and feeling confident and safe enough to be able to like put it, even not just in art, but in like conversation or like a lot of other things or everything. Mm. <laughs> I, can, I can certainly draw some parallels with music as well. Mm. Um, when you were saying, Emma, about um, art in school, you're often sort of put in one box where oh we're going to use oil pastels and I'm very good at oil pastels or oh I'm yeah. not so good and then you sort of carry that with you. Um, mm -hmm. I've always been aware of that in music as well and yeah. I think EMAS do an amazing job at just sort of letting the children explore so many different instruments, so many different ways to communicate as well with no right or wrong way and the confidence they have just to like come into the music room and be like, I'm going to play the guitar today. And they'll just pick it up and they'll start doing whatever sort of melody or rhythm or even tapping the side of it. But it's just the confidence that the space allows them to go in and do that. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, um, so I have a question here for you, Marta, because you, you, are a trained Montessori teacher and I, I feel like when when we see all of those beautiful materials on the shelf, you know, that prepared environment, you go inside. This was my first experience of Montessori. So I'm, I'm also a Montessori teacher, but um, I, I remember mm -hmm. when my children were little and the first time I stepped into a Montessori environment, um, well, it felt beautiful, it felt relaxing, it felt prepared. So 
what about um I'm, I'm trying to find the right question here, but what is the link between art and creativity and those prepared materials? It's How the prepared do... adult. <laughs> That's the link. That's the link. Um, it's you and your, um, it's, you, as we were all saying, our, our passions, right? And and our likes and um uh, so you you bring that into 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 action, and um, um, what do I want to say? Really, uh, there was there's a um, uh, in Montessori we we use a term called the the dynamic link, right? That the prepared adult is the dynamic link between um, the child and the environment, and um, and as you model things to them. Um, Things things come come to life. Um, I feel like I have so many things in my head now. I kind of lost lost track of the answer now. <laughs> so um, yeah, let let me help you to find that. Um, I'm I'm trying to create a link between because today's conversation is about how to bring artistry to, into your everyday life, and I feel like. Uh, Emas, we it, it it's like I don't know if you can see my hands, but it's like it's it's like everywhere you have art and you have teachers and teaching and and mathematics and languages and and every kind of things that you can see later in life in secondary school or in different boxes. Uh, well, at Emas, it feels like it's all together and it's all linked together so and it starts because you're um um you're working with infants but you used to also work with older children how um what is the link between creativity and development of creativity and those beautifully created environment that feels structured and feels quite yeah. I, really, I really think um it's the exposure and um i'm very fortunate because when you're working with the infants they're seeing things for the first time um they're discovering the world so you're in a position of presenting things to them and they will begin to to get to know themselves through that contact with with the physical world around them so the different materials that you bring that's why for instance sensory tables we use a lot of um and you can create scenes you can create small worlds with all the different sensory materials, whether it's it's moon sand, which is basically flour and, and some oil, or natural elements that you can bring, or lentils and, and dried dried beans. Um, um, and I'm lost again. <laughs> um, but that, that allows that allows to to the transformation of things. And more materials that are getting contact as well with um, with with the paints and more traditional art uh, materials. And I like the dabbers on the easel. They or or the dancing or using scarves or using the 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 percussion instruments. It's really interesting because you begin to see that they get drawn. So they, there's a big selection, right? Um, but then they begin to put aside things kind of clean the air and go into a direction and I think that's when the personality begins to develop they begin to be aware of who they are I really like that hmm, I no, I actually I, I like that better and maybe later on if you develop that early on they will begin as they grow to want to um, go more in depth in that and oh, I, I, that, that's my path, that's my path. And that brings confidence, that brings self-esteem, that brings this is my place in the world, there is a purpose for me, I know who I am. And it's amazing because being, working with the infants, you're in that position of opening the world to them. 
that's big responsibility too, but it's great fun because you see in their eyes that moment of discovery, that, ooh, that uh, you know, explosion of sensation, like when you blow, blow bubbles or what was it today? Oh, a child was cutting, he was cutting and the, the cut a piece of paper and it flew. And just the sound, maybe the sound or, or just the motion, it was just magical. <laughs> just cutting a piece of paper. And then that child that did that today, then I said, hmm, what could we do with all the little pieces of cutting that you that you just have in your bowl? Maybe we could do a collage. Maybe we have a gluing work. Should we put this right away and bring the other one? Hmm. And he did. <laughs> So um, that was beautiful. <laughs> you, you said something really important here. It's the purpose of education, basically. What you're saying is this child is there to discover who they are. Mm -hmm. um, it, it reminds me um, one of our podcasts what, that we uh, recreated with. Um, Ian Campbell, my colleague, um, um, he said something. I, I don't want to quote him because I don't remember exactly, but he said something around the journey that the child takes through at the school from one year old, from your classroom um, up to adulthood, 17, 18 year old, oh. is a journey to, in discovering who they are they already know within himself but it's like it's 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 hidden when you're one year old it's 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 hidden you can end up 40 year old and it's all, all still hidden but that's okay what we do here uh, what i understood is to help and support the children to discover who they are and what makes them happy when you, you were talking about cutting and seeing flowing away, flying away that piece of paper, it's like, this is something that makes me happy. You can recognize throughout the experience. So thank you for sharing this. Um, um, can I follow on, Christina, from, sure. from that? It made me think, uh, Marta, yeah, it's a lovely picture of a child cutting and, and learning the excitement of that. Um, being able to do it maybe for the first time and the paper. But I think the element of experimentation within creativity as well and allowing space for that, you know, allowing the paper to sort of fly in different directions and the child to, to have a go as they wish cutting rather than it being shaped into something very specific and just that very small moment is a moment of like beautiful just art in in that day isn't it within that maybe 10 minutes or so but then you know being able to then support them to think about how could we use those pieces but it made me think about experimentation and uh giving space for experimentation even though it might create more mess or uncertainty but that we can hold that within the classroom hold it within the kind of therapeutic space as well um, um, a question just emerged so um, maybe a question for you Lindsay or, or Emma who, who you, you so you you said within limits so if we talk about creativity and seeing beyond um, a piece of paper basic usage where is the limit or is there any limit? That's a really broad question, I think. Um, I think there could be multiple answers to that, but my, my sort of briefest summary would be that there is no limit because art sort of filters through so many subjects and for music especially, you can tie so many different things together and use music as a tool to draw connections between science or mathematics or to even help remember facts in different subjects 
um, we, we wrote a song about triangles in elementary um, a couple of weeks ago, which was actually really catchy. I, I learned a couple of things myself about um, isosceles triangles and equilateral triangles. And uh, yeah, it's singing through my head, but I'll, I'll spare you the song tonight. <laughs> um, but I think, I think music can draw so many different subjects together and therefore art can filter through so many different things. But, mm. Yeah, that's my take on it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think um, um, I quite like thinking of not not looking at art as just, or a, a lot of focus on materials, like not just looking at traditional materials, but I think we were talking about it a, a bit, but um, kind of looking at everyday materials and like we've been doing a lot of work on plastic that's been linked to the classroom and in the art room. Um, and the children now like talk a lot about everyday materials and how to bring it into the art room um, or think about things that they already have. Like I had one of the girls bring their shoe into the art room the other day and want to fix it. <laughs> like just um, so bringing up conversations around what art can be um, and what creating can be. Um, and it just, yeah, it's really cool when it, small conversations then have led into, um, yeah, have gone into their minds and made them think more openly about things. And I think a lot of the time um, I might plan one thing and yeah. then the children will sort of take it and run with it and it'll turn into something completely different that I could have never, ever thought of. Yeah. And it's brilliant. And yeah. it's just, oh, yeah, let's use this idea. And before you know it, we've got a musical about animals in a zoo and there's a policeman in there. There's so much storytelling that it all sort of weaves together. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. And they, and they also get inspiration from each other. Mm. Uh, I see that as well. Yeah, um, there was one one time that we were <laughs> have a big big paper on the, on the the table, and the the objective of what I what I proposed to them was to do with with brushes. But then one of them just put the brush aside, splashed with with her hand, waved it around. All of a sudden, everybody was putting their brushes away, and they were digging in with their hands and doing lots of prints and that just yeah <laughs> they observe what's around them and they just join in yeah and I think that comes from not feeling judged or not being um like told off or yes. yeah I think it's just allowing them to to have that as long as yeah it's done enough then they feel safe and yeah and I think that sort of small group environment is really, I know, Lindsay, you can sort of, you teach in sort of small groups and, and Emma and I uh, facilitate an art therapy group. And I think, um, as Marta was saying, just the importance of what they can bring to one another in those smaller group settings um, and, and providing those um, kind of just out with the, the kind of the big classroom learning environment as well, particularly for the kind of elementary um, group. Um, feels really significant as well to experience different size groups to experience one-to-one -one, the small group the large classroom environment um, yeah so uh, Rachel um, I, I wonder art therapy can be mystical for some people. So let me just clarify a little bit. What are, um, what are the topics that you work on? What, and what are the out outcomes basically that you can, you can create with the children? Or are those, the, are the children create them for themselves and you support them? How does it work basically? Yeah, there's definitely that element of kind of co-creation, I'd say, within um, drawing kind of aims into the kind of therapeutic work that we do with the children. So I think I spoke about it a little bit um, 
with the kind of holistic approach to learning and sort of fitting in that box of school as well or that area of school um, that I think it's just really normal for children to hit maybe months where they just hit that little bump and just need a little bit of a helping hand, a holding hand. Um, maybe that's through myself, but also it's through all the other significant people in their lives. Um, I'm just adding on to that maybe for that little season to, to get them back on back on track again. So um, children can come to our therapy sessions for all different types of of reasons. Um, I think something common would be maybe something like low self-esteem or confidence. And I think we can all say as adults, we've probably all had periods of our life where we might have felt that. Um, so that would be something, maybe an aim that we would work on. Um, and the child would be part of creating that aim and understanding that and taking it through the, the work. And I think art actually is um, a really amazing uh, kind of medium and way to help children to grow in confidence um, I think even mixing a new color um, for the first time you know the vitality within color mixing oh I've made a new color um, I think even moments like that can provide confidence or I've turned this cardboard box into I don't know a rocket um, and being able to you know sort of support um, the child and uh, in just seeing uh, yeah what can be created from um, as we've already been speaking about kind of very normal everyday objects so uh, that would be one example of kind of a an aim we'd work with or a referral that we'd work with um, but there's lots of variety and I think as we've touched on I think groups um, are fantastic because they're not just learning from me and me learning from the the child and the one-to-one -one, but there's opportunity to learn from each other to learn you know every child has got strengths so when you have a group suddenly you have a room full of strengths and that's a really amazing place to start from when you're starting a art therapy group look at all the strengths we've got in this room how we can learn from each other and support each other in the things that maybe feel a little bit more difficult at the minute so hopefully that's provided a answer christina <laughs> to that question yeah without oh, wandering off too much <laughs> Um, I have the feeling when, when I listen to all of you, basically, it's, um, we, we talked about this, uh, who discovering who, who they are. And, uh, this, this basically comes from the experience and from all those open-ended activities. Um, but there, there's another side that, well, as a coach, I always come back to that other side uh, of creativity and uh, and art, and and uh, which is looking for solutions. There's a problem; we need problem solving. How can we uh, create some solutions there? So, I'm. I wonder. I don't know who can answer to that or maybe a collective answer could be could be nice but uh, how do you teach problem solving through the artistic uh, well I, or do you teach it is it important i think it happens um, in the moment when there is a need for it. For instance, I've seen when they start building with, with blocks and if they want to create a bridge or they run out of blocks and then they look around, what else can I use? <laughs> and then they'll see the, the train tracks and they're, some of them are flat, some of them are curved and they will use that and they will experiment what works. So they try, try and error, it doesn't work. They put it back that they see a box they, they combine things and i see a city all of a sudden you have a city emerging out of different materials and it just looks looks stunning it looks amazing yeah. and they did it they did it yeah i think that sometimes um like as a a I don't know, like a, a guide, I guess. Um, sometimes you can see that the child wants to work something out themselves. 
and sometimes they maybe are asking for help and it's kind of like being intuitive about about that um and then maybe none of us have the answers and we have to work it out together I'm trying to think of an example like when we were doing like peg weaving or something and we were trying to work out how to um tie it together so you can tell that some of them want to work work it out themselves and some of them I don't know want more guidance from me or from others I think yeah maybe like yeah so being open to collaboration but also working independently I think I think in music the term problem solving is one that I've never really considered or thought about before but now that it's got me thinking I'm thinking how how does problem solving relate to music and I, I guess the the closest I could maybe get to is if we're maybe songwriting as a group say there are maybe five or six children and um, like a small music group together um if we're starting to write a song and we don't know how it's going to finish there are all these ideas sort of going around and I think maybe different melodies as well. Someone wants to play the piano, someone wants to play guitar. Um, I would say there's no there's no right or wrong. There's no specific answer. This is how it should go. This is how it should end. So I think in music, I always try and make that very clear. Um, but at the same time, it's good to explore different options as well. So I guess problem solving in music could be where we test yeah. out all the different mm -hmm. outcomes. So let's sing it this way. Let's sing it that way. Let's end with this person's idea. Let's end with a piano solo. And then we can decide what way works best. When I listen to you, um, I also hear, I, and I, I kind of link it back to self-confidence when I hear what you're saying. Because if you imagine all together we're going to write a song, well, if you are more than two, most probably you're going to hit that no, point. I oh, I don't that. agree with you. I want this and you want that. And then this sounds better. So there's a whole uh, other dimension of, of uh, collaboration and creating communication and creating self-confidence through that that whole um, process you create with them and I feel like you as a teacher you're there to hold the space as you said sometimes I introduce a new thing and it's it end up to, to facilitate a negotiation sometimes or oh, we've got one idea here we've got one idea here let's listen to that maybe we could combine these ideas together or maybe we could try it this way and then the conversation often opens out ideas from children who maybe wouldn't say something straight away and it sort of sparks all this sort of conversation and ideas and yeah mm. it's a great space for them to have the conversation. And it's, and it's basically like it, it links to what you you were saying earlier Rachel uh, about again this this self-confidence or uh, self-expressions and, and allowing yourself to express yourself it's it's also it's almost like I'm expressing who am I by mm. trying different things in, in order to get yeah. well I would say in music you want something nice something great something mm. that sounds great and that you're proud of and these sort mm. of negotiations as well I should mention can happen with children who are maybe six or seven years old, all the way up to, to the teens that I work with as well. We sort of collaborate, discuss ideas. I guess that's a form of problem solving as well, just exploring the outcomes, deciding mm -hmm. as a group collectively what works best and going with it. Yeah. And I think that sort of small group environment is really helpful for the children <laughs> when they have learned about how they express themselves. So this is my form of self-expression. How does that fit along this person's form of self-expression and this person's? Um, and I think that's a really important life skill, isn't it? To learn, actually, how do I fit along other, other people and how do we bring the best out of each other in this setting? Um, and I know often Emma in our group often will have 
moments where there's something needs to be shared and there's this moment in the group where the children have got to think about how we're going to as as a simple thing of sharing how do we share this and and often Christina as you said when you hold the safe the space and you create safety they can they can work it out themselves and they can get to that place of knowing what's best themselves I feel like that 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 is maybe the limit what we I were asking about earlier and maybe we just mm. found just the, the space I'm holding and the safety, um, mm. which is, it can be physical, emotional, uh, intellectual safety for everybody. When you hold that space firmly and be, you are there, something magical happens and they can thrive and they can... Uh, well, I, I don't know who said that because I, I feel like we're just going around um, in this little group and um, you said at one point that they, they come up with something that I never thought they could come up with, uh, a new solution, a new way of uh, seeing things, um, you know. No. So uh, we have a question here um, from Audrey trying to figure out if the magic ingredient is this environment where you have a world to be discovered in one place and the child can explore and navigate where his interest and talents take him holistically rather than in a linear manner. I was thinking a little bit about that today, about how... Um... My, my brain just isn't linear as a brain, <laughs> but often how, uh, yeah, just getting there can mean going one, two, six, seven, and sort of dotting around to kind of find a solution rather than stepping through something kind of very exactly. Um, so that stood out to me just because I was thinking about that today already, providing the space for a child not to be okay, I've finished one task, let's move on, i finish finished the next, but actually how can we create an environment where they can go between things, explore things, join the dots up between different um, activities and creative, creative moments and materials. I suppose life, life isn't linear, is it? <laughs> 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 yeah. learning in a holistic manner is is really important for life because yeah. it's not like you have one element in your life and then oh yep that's box ticks move on to the next mm -hmm. one things happen at different times so maybe the holistic approach is yeah. beneficial for that so I, I can share uh, just a little experience. So as a, as a systemic coach, um, I always teach mind mapping to teams. Wherever where I go, I, I go in that systemic, creative way just to see what what is important, what is uh, what is the little action that I can do today that matters, which is a non-linear thinking. And when I go and talk about this with adults, obviously not with children um, or um, they just go naturally in there and they just, most of the time they say, oh, that makes sense. Mm. We've been taught to be linear, but basically, as you said, we are not. Yeah. We 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 live in in the middle of our own system, and we create something that is around us, who we are. So, as we said, education is about discovering who we are. That's that's the most important thing. Um, we have a comment here. Creativity is also supporting inclusion do you think how does it support him um, I think um, there's 
like I'm trying to think sometimes a child might want to be on their own in the space um, and it's like facilitating a space where they can be and be on their own and feel like they can make a mess and um, yeah use the space how they want um, and also like not not um having set ways of doing things i'm trying to think like maybe a child would want to do something super expressive or a child would want to do something much more um like have a plan something much more structured and want to do it from start to finish so it's like creating an environment that they can do that i think i don't know if that answers it <laughs> um so yeah, um, allowing them to communicate how they want to. Um, yeah. Hello, Ben. Life Hello, is ben. unpredictable, right? <laughs> Sometimes you can hear things that are not supposed to be there, but that's fine. <laughs> it's all about breathing. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm um, thinking about. Oh, sorry, Christina. Yeah, that's fine. That um, Rachel, go ahead. I think I was thinking about the word inclusion, and I suppose the complete opposite of that is exclusion, isn't it? To be excluded from. And I think when I think about creativity, actually, nobody is excluded from creativity. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are, or and you know wherever you're anything about you you can be creative because creativity is so varied isn't it and we've spoken about it from those kind of really early years that um, Marta has there's so many creative moments within that classroom and within the children there so I think I think that for me makes creativity feel even more exciting when actually you actually think there's nobody that is excluded from creativity and I think I was thinking and I mentioned this to everyone before we started about how that idea of maybe creativity sometimes feeling a bit intimidating or if it's maybe something that doesn't seem um, natural to to who you are um, I think Lindsay you spoke a bit about how creativity is often um, brought into lots of different in subject matters and I think sometimes it's just the small moments I think when I see the tables laid for snack I just think that's a moment of creativity somebody has put um, a tablecloth and a flower in the middle of the table there's creativity within that moment and yeah that can be within a school environment it can be imitated in a home environment as well um, so yeah So th that would be, it, it's interesting because we, we had that little chat before, uh, Rachel, and uh, you said that maybe what we can say is that everybody has that creativity, even you as an adult. Sometimes we have been told and we have been educated otherwise. Yeah. But... It's basically yours to discover your own creativity. It's yours to go and, and, and embrace it and, and accept it, basically, that you can take a piece of paper and draw and that's okay for yourself or even be, be who you are. Mm -hmm. that's, that's basically an, an even... Uh, further down on the lane like being creative is for everybody when you say to yourself I'm not creating I'm not creative I am not which is a self-expression about who I'm not so who am I if you tell yourself I'm creative what you're gonna create with that Uh, Christina, that reminds me of something that happened uh, today that I that makes me think of a book. I can't remember the author, but the the story is called The Dot. 
is about this this child he thinks that you know that uh, they, they, they know how to draw and then the teacher just hand them a paper and ask them to do something and they just do a dot the teacher looks at it very intensely and says now sign it <laughs> Uh, your name and then the next day uh, the child comes to the school and the teacher had framed that thought oh. <laughs> and that was a moment where that child just all of a sudden just started creating dots and then bigger dots and then dots with different colors and then dots that weren't a dot but they were a dot because it was she painted all the way around the paper and left the middle empty so that was the dot because the other way around was, was colored. And then um, so it reminded me because today, today uh, in after school care, it was a child that was, he did, a, he did a drawing. And then I looked at him. And I remember that story. And then, and then I said, Mom, now you need to sign my it. Name. <laughs> it's very important to sign your name. And the amazing thing, you know what happened, Ben? You know what he did? He turned the paper around and he signed his name, one letter with different color. But he didn't stop just there. He looked over, and the next, next, uh, on the same table, there was another child gluing. He said, hmm, that color looks interesting. He started gluing. And then I looked at him, and I said, hmm, would you like some feathers? To get some feathers. And he was like, oh, can you get me a green one, a small green one? And then I said, hmm, I have some buttons here. Would you like some buttons? He said, hmm. And then all of a sudden, from his signature, just a whole new peace just came about it was just just amazing and then he wanted to take a picture of it said, all right let's do it together let's swim. and he decided how he wanted the picture and then he clicked on the button to, to take the picture mm -hmm. declare <laughs> who you are and if you declare <gasps> that you're creative and you sign your paper <laughs> you actually become <laughs> All right, so uh, I can see it's time for us to wrap up. Uh, I also had uh, a nice comment here. Creativity is also about learning how to survive. Mm. Well, yeah, us human beings and humans needs to survive and finding solutions. This is why we are here where we are today. Um, uh, because we are creative and exploring arts and mixing it everywhere in therapy in your classroom in your home and in your life is basically um a way to survive and a way to thrive so thank you so much lindsay marta emma and rachel tonight's conversation was wonderful um this video will be online on LinkedIn, on youtube and um on facebook for quite a couple of weeks i think so uh next month theme is outdoor yes it's springtime even if <laughs> it was snowing yesterday here in scotland <laughs> but you know it's Scotland. It can change any time. But yes, it's springtime and we want to take you with our little videos online and finally on, uh, on our next webinar to explore what we are doing outdoor, outdoors and how we create the space for the children. Again, it's the same topics. Building self-confidence, knowing yourself, exploring difficulties and unpredictability. And we finally inspired our little Ben here with a little ukulele. And it's time for us. Thank you so much, everyone. And see you tomorrow at school. Bye. And next time on Bye. 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 Bye.